Hello, and welcome to the Nursing World Shared Practice Forums. My name is Cheryl Toole, and I am the Director of Nursing in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at Boston Children's Hospital. Today, we are very pleased to welcome Dr. Deborah Burke. Deborah is the Associate Chief Nurse for Women and Children, Mental Health, Cancer Center, and Community Health Nursing Practice at Massachusetts General Hospital. Deborah also serves as Affiliate Associate Professor at Northeastern University, where she is an expert advisor to Doctor of Nursing practice students. She is a Board of Trustees member at Martha's Vineyard Hospital. Additionally, Deborah has received the 100 Award for the Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center for her fundraising activities to support breast cancer research. Her education includes graduation from Northeastern University, where she received her Bachelor of Nursing Science degree and her Doctorate in Nursing Practice. She received her Master of Business Administration from Salem State University. Deborah's main focus of research has been on leadership characteristics that support the professional practice environment and nurse satisfaction, which we will be discussing today. Debbie, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Can you tell us why this topic is important to you and why you chose this research study? So as an associate chief nurse, I work with a group of nurse directors, and um, we measure staff satisfaction pretty regularly. And looking at the individual unit and nurse director satisfaction scores, I was noticing a difference between units, particularly in the area of nurse manager, ability, leadership, and support of nurses, that one category. So I was really interested in that, and I wanted to understand the scores better, and I also wanted to understand what's the story behind those scores. So what I did was I identified all those units that scored higher than benchmark in that one particular category, and there were 33 units. And then I invited nurse directors and staff from those units to participate in my study, which was a qualitative study. Each of those nurses and nurse directors that volunteered were interviewed, a one-on-one -on -one interview with an experienced qualitative researcher, and they were asked a variety of questions, all aimed at trying to understand what are the positive characteristics of the nurse director that contribute to staff satisfaction. And so both nurse directors and staff, the line of questioning followed a framework of appreciative inquiry, which really attempts to identify those positive aspects, best practices, success factors. And those one-on-one -on -one interviews were taped and then transcribed. And that's when I got involved in terms of my job was with another investigator to really read all of those transcribed audio tapes to understand and look for themes uh, within the nurse director group, then within the staff nurse group. And then I looked across groups to look for any level of um, themes that might be consistent. You mentioned that you used appreciative inquiry as the framework for your study. Can you tell us why? So appreciative inquiry intends to look for positive aspects, um, success factors, and uh, best practices. And so I really wanted to focus in on the positive aspects of a uh, nurse director's practice. When I was initially reading your manuscript, it looked to me like it was a smaller sample size. It was mm -hmm. 33 units, um, nine nurse directors, nine nurses amongst those 33 units. Can you talk a little bit about how you ended at that sample size? Yes. Interestingly, when you're doing a qualitative study, which is what I did, you reach data saturation once you've heard, you keep hearing the same things over and over. And in this case, I started to hear the same themes after interviewing nine nurse directors and nine staff nurses. And how did you encourage or how did you, I guess, protect those that volunteered or spoke up about wanting to participate? Yes. Because I can imagine that, you know, there might have been some hesitation by staff nurses and even directors mm -hmm. with a leader at your level in terms of wanting or feeling comfortable about sharing their insight and feedback. That was a really important aspect of the study. And you're right, I needed to protect their confidentiality. So 
I actually worked through my staff assistant. All the emails went through her, um, two nurse directors and staff, and then all the responses came back to her. So I never knew who ended up being in the study, who participated, and I also didn't participate in any of the interviews. So I had a qualitative researcher interview the nurse directors, a separate researcher interview the staff, and I did not interview any of them because I would have introduced the bias that you just spoke about. And so what my responsibility was to review the um, transcription of all of the um, interviews were taped. And for my, my role was to review the transcribed audio tapes of all the interviews to look for um, the results. And were you surprised with the results that you found? I was somewhat surprised. I think that um, what is in the literature right now is um, staff have been um, actively studied on what are the qualities of their nurse director or their nurse manager that they find valuable. And so a lot of those qualities were the same. And the same thing holds true for research on nurse directors. Some of those same qualities were identified in the literature. What was different, though, in this study was the level of agreement between the nurses and their nurse directors. So I was really pleased with that. So there was a lot of, they were both identifying common themes, which was very exciting. Now, in your manuscript, you refer to nurse directors as chief retention officers. And there's um, studies that have shown, including a study at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, showing that nurses leave their positions not necessarily um, due to other factors that we might think about, like schedules and pay, but specifically, they don't leave necessarily hospitals, they leave their manager. Can you expand yes. a little bit on that? Because as a nurse director, I want to know more about that. Yes. So um, studies have been done for many, many years, and um, very early studies um, showed the same factor that, um, you know, and I remember even as a new graduate nurse, being given that advice, work for some a good manager. That's the most important thing. And I think that studies have shown that that is true. And that, um, and you mentioned the Robert Wood Johnson. Um, Robert Wood Johnson actually funded a study that looked at like the top 10 reasons why uh, nurses leave their jobs. And one of those was their manager. So staff are looking for um, good relationships with their manager, particularly new graduate nurses who are looking for someone who's supportive, who's understanding, who understands the practice environment. Um, and probably that first year is so vulnerable anyway, but, um, but that is a common factor in why people stay with their jobs and why they don't. The other thing that came out, and I guess I want a little guidance on this as well, if there was any um, findings in your study regarding how do nurse leaders make sure that they have that same presence for nurses that work off shifts. I have a large amount of nurses that work either permanent night mm -hmm. shift or weekend shift. Despite the many hours that we put in as nurse leaders, you can't be there 24-7. Um, how do you make sure that you connect with those staff as well and they feel as valued? Mm -hmm. Well, what I can share with you is some of the examples that our nurse directors talked about. Um, we didn't specifically ask that question, you know, how do you connect with the off shift? Um, and, um, but some of the things that were talked about was making sure that um, whenever issues came up, that there was one-on-one -on -one feedback and connection and follow-up on issues. So that would be for any staff that was um, being responsive. It was very interesting. Somebody said, um, I want my staff to be responsive to their patients, so I'm responsive to them. Yes. So some of um, the nurse directors did a lot of that by email, texting, using uh, uh, a variety of different ways to connect with staff. Because you're right, you can't be here 24-7, and um, yet staff want to feel like they're connected to the nurse director. Yes, and I loved that, that 
you know, they're there for the patients and we have to set the example that we're there for them, yes. right? So that they can be there for the patients and be their best. Right. So that definitely came out in your manuscript and definitely hit home in terms yes. of making that influence. Um, when looking at your results, which theme was most important to staff and nurse directors? The Clearly the number one theme that was most important to both was empowerment. I think that uh, empowerment is where staff wanted to feel like they were making decisions that were appropriate decisions for them to make, and they wanted to feel like they had the support, encouragement uh, of their nurse directors, and they also didn't want to feel like they were punished or reprimanded um, about the decisions that they made independently. So empowerment was incredibly important to staff. It was also important for nurse directors, and it's interesting because nurse directors talked about it a lot, about like, I need to teach them and encourage them to make decisions because I'm not here all the time. I'm not here 24-7. And I think there were a couple of ways that nurse directors encouraged that. Not only did they not answer things for staff immediately, like not give them the answers, say, well, what would you do? But they also use role modeling to show how you might uh, empower staff. Like, listen, we're gonna go and speak to someone together, let's, let's practice first. Those kind of examples they would give. Yes, and I think that's so important. And I think it also came through in terms of the decision-making, you know, not micromanaging. Yes. With that decision-making, that shared ownership. And I think that's something that comes with time because I think sometimes developing leaders they want that decision-making autonomy, but the ownership and accountability, just in case the decision's not quite what ends up being um, the ideal, that sense of responsibility is a little bit intimidating. So I think as a nurse yeah. leader, trusting their decisions, and it was clear that in some of the dialogue you received in some of the themes, that the nurses felt like even if the decision wasn't necessarily the perfect decision, that they were always supported, that their leader never said to them, you know, it was the wrong decision. But they said, you know, these might be other options. This might be an alternative for the next time. So definitely handled it in a supportive way. Right. And that's where um, the the statement, I'm not going to be the Monday morning quarterback came. We've all heard that. Yes. I love that. Where staff said, um, you know, they, they to your point, they'd be afraid to make decisions if they were going to be reprimanded on Monday when you came into work and said, you know, what made you think to do that? Right. And so I think that they need to feel um, empowered, but also supported. And, um, and then what nurse directors talked a lot about was um, that was sort of where coaching came into play. Let's, let's relook at that issue. And let's think about maybe now um, how you might do things differently. Or think about this the next time this comes up. So I think that that was where that coaching role modeling came into play. Yes. And I think what's helpful is, you know, if, if they're always keeping the patient and the family central to their decision making, this is what I try to teach them that, you know, there's always, their decision will always be guided in the right direction, even That's though right. there might be multiple options. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about the environment that you conducted the study? Yes. Yeah, so it's a large academic medical center. Uh, a magnet hospital. So I realized that that also um, affects the study results because uh, just by virtue of being a magnet hospital, um, we try to encourage, for example, transformational leadership skills in our um, in all of our leaders. And so, um, and that is what this the study showed. Those are transformational leadership skills: empowering, visibility, um, role modeling passion and excellence, all of those. And um, so that influenced the study. But I also think that um, being a, a large academic medical center with lots of different priorities, this was very positive and exciting findings that we are still paying so much attention to leadership and the importance of leadership in the practice environment. We'd like to return now to the audience and ask our colleagues a question. In your answer, could you first please state your city and country location? The question is this. 
In this study, empowerment was found to be the most important characteristic. Can you give some examples of how you use empowerment with your staff? So can you expand a little bit about what were the themes that you found? Yes, so let's talk about the nurse directors first. So the nurse directors identified three themes that were important, that they felt were important for their staff satisfaction. Those three were empowerment, visibility, and role modeling. And I'll share a little bit about what I mean by each of those. So for empowerment, nurse directors said, I support their decision making. I don't second guess staff. Uh, for visibility, I round on patients so I'm available and accessible to staff. And then role modeling, I role model problem solving skills, conflict management, and I also role model professional behaviors. And then for staff, they identified the same three themes, empowerment, visibility, and role modeling. But they described them a little differently. So empowerment was, they would say things like, she shares control. She trusts me in decision making. For visibility, she connects with me and we have meaningful interactions. And for role modeling, she never looks stressed and she always looks professional. So those were the themes that were that each group identified. And then there were unique themes. So for example, the RNs identified manager passion and vision for excellence. And one nurse said, I love what I do, and I think half of it's because of the environment that I work in. And she maintains that environment. And then another nurse said, described her manager's passion as contagious and exciting. And then the nurse directors also identified um, one unique theme, which we called authentic presence. I should say that um, visibility um, was actually very different than presence. So both groups identified that visibility was important to them. Uh, nurse directors talked about making sure they were visible on the unit. They had an open door policy, they were accessible and mentioned a variety of ways that they ensure that they're visible. So maybe they would round on patients so that they're in the room so staff could see them. Maybe they'd be at the front desk or the nurse's station so that staff could have easy access to them. Um, whereas the concept of presence uh, was something that nurse directors described, and they described it as authentic presence. And that is the purposeful, like getting to know each individual getting to know them personally, professionally, getting to know um, about their practice, what are their strengths. And so it was, um, so you can see the difference between visibility sort of being around, whereas presence is that connection, that one-on-one -on -one connection. It was so inspiring reading some of the actual quotes and dialogue mm -hmm. from nurses. As a nurse leader, you, you know, reading it, I just couldn't help but think, wow, it would be so nice to hear this, you know, from your staff and really be able to connect in that way to hear this feedback. I think that's why we all do the work that we do, yes. um, to kind of see that work through the lens of those that hopefully we're supporting and bringing up and that feel. I know one nurse said, you know, she makes me feel important. Yes. And I think that, you know, as a nurse leader, you want to make all of your nurses feel important mm -hmm. because the work they're doing is beyond important. We'd like to stop now and ask our colleagues around the world a question. In your answer, could you first please state your city and country location? The question is this. If you are a nursing director, can you describe to us what creative ways you use to be present with your staff? Of the units that didn't score as high, how did you share this information with those units and the nurse directors? Um, and what supports are set up to continue to develop those nurse directors that might need a little bit more help in getting their scores up? So the first thing that was really important, obviously, was to share the results with the organization at large, because I didn't really know who participated and who didn't. And so, um, so what we did was after um, the results were finished, um, I presented them to the entire organization, the, both staff and leadership. 
and so that I could share what our findings were. And also, frankly, so I could thank everyone who contributed to the study because I think that I appreciated their time, but also their honesty. And, uh, and, but it was an opportunity for all of us to learn from as well. And then I think that continues now. So for example, um, we've had nurse director retreats where we have, now that the um, study's been published, where we've read the article and talked about it, um, we're hopefully going to use this in the findings in leadership development programs that we develop in the future because we do have regular leadership educational opportunities for our leaders and frankly for our staff. That's great. Another thing that was interesting looking at your study was just how important it is for leaders to be transparent, but to also set expectations. I think that, you know, many times we we certainly all have expectations, but I don't know that we always make those explicit. And it's hard to hold leaders accountable when you're not really defining your expectations of them in terms of decision making and leadership. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, some things that you learned in your study or that you do to help kind of coach and develop future nurse directors around that? That's a great question. And, you know, it's interesting. You probably are remembering there was a, a few quotes nurse directors talked about in their coaching role modeling um, aspects of their role. Some, one of the nurse directors said, I'm certified, so I expect you to be certified too. So setting those expectations overtly, but also uh, role modeling, for example, you're going back to school, you expect your staff to go back to school, and if they're not going back to school, what other kind of um, development are they doing for themselves? Are they involved in uh, collaborative governance or shared governance committee structure? Are they... Um, participating in research or quality improvement projects. And so the nurse director then also has to be doing that. Yes. So because sometimes, of course, we tell people what's expected, but we don't do it ourselves. So I think that in, in this study, we could see that nurse directors saw the correlation between um, what they were saying and also what they're doing because staff were watching that. Yeah. And I think that in your manuscript, they described it like the this contagious passion, like yes. that when nurse directors set that example, it was authentic and it really almost set this tone and energy that it wasn't just an expectation, but it actually motivated staff to want to do these things, yes. not because they felt they had to, but because they truly wanted to from the inspiration from the nurse leader. Yes. I think another thing that stood out was they talked about giving, obviously giving feedback is something that's part of all of our job and work um, as nurse leaders, but also the ability of staff to give feedback back to their nurse leader. And I thought that was really important and interesting. I thought that was really interesting too, because I think that we're often used to a uh, supervisor giving us feedback on our performance, but it really is important for staff um, and for nurse directors to ask their staff, so do you think that these policies are fair? Do you think that I should be um, doing this in a different way? And I think that it's important to be checking in all of the time. And then it becomes something where it's almost like peer review, right? Where it becomes more and more comfortable sharing both positive and areas of improvement with each other. Yes. And I think that bi-directional flow of communication really is unique to setting that culture of trust that staff know that they can come to their nurse leader and be transparent and open. And I think it speaks to the credibility and the humility of that leader as well. Yeah. I'd like to turn to the audience now and ask a question. In your answer, could you please state your city and country and location? The question is this, what qualities do you find valuable in your nurse directors? In your institution, what resources are in place to support the nurse directors? So the nurse directors have um, regular opportunities to come together and share uh, experiences, best practices, struggles. We also have leadership development programs 
where um, they're afforded the opportunity to um, help them in areas where they feel like they need some help. So for example, maybe corrective action or behavioral interviewing or giving and getting feedback. There's lots of different opportunities for growth and development. And then I think that, of course, there's that formal but also informal um, role development, which is with your associate chief nurses. So that's part of my role, which is my job is to help support them and help them be successful in any way that they need. And so I need to be available, accessible, all the things that staff articulated about their nurse director, I need to be for my nurse directors. And, uh, and then I think we need to share um, results like this, staff satisfaction results with each other. We need to share results with um, our own staff to get feedback, but also I think it's very important for people who are scoring high to share why they think that's true and to help those who maybe are struggling in some areas. I think that's so important, and I think that can be done in a positive way where you can say, you know, I think, you know, Susan or Charlotte might have a really good way of going about this rather than pointing out the way that they're not going about it. Absolutely. That's the appreciative inquiry framework. Yes. Which is very Looking inspiring. at positive. Exactly. That's great. And I think that in terms of supporting nurse directors, you know, we all are also responsible at some point for succession planning. And, you know, I did look at the, um, the group of nurses that participated in the study. I want to say around 70 to 75 percent of them were part time. And although it was multi-generational in terms of the participants, there was a larger proportion of um, nurses around the age of 50 to 55. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just trying to think of ways that we as nurse leaders can kind of look toward the future of bringing up the next generation mm -hmm. of nurse directors and what are some of the things that we need to think about in leadership positions bringing up that next generation. Right. Well, and I think that although we didn't look at sort of generational differences in this study, I think that um, I think that it still speaks to what's important. And as we mentioned earlier about the Robert Wood Johnson study, that um, particularly during the first year of employment for staff nurses, they're looking for sort of that connection, that uh, support, that relationship. And so I think it speaks to what that younger generation is looking for. and um, But I agree with you, we need to think about how do we um, contribute to succession planning and how do we keep the roles of um, leadership attractive to um, the next generation of nurses. I love that um, staff identified manager passion and vision for excellence as something that was valuable to them. And I think that probably crosses generations. I don't think that's probably unique to the group that participated in the study, which is that group in their 50s. Yes. And I think that ties so much into also work satisfaction, right? And life satisfaction yes. as well. So I think we have to make sure that we focus on those things when we look at, you know, what are all those components of our professional career that maintain us to be satisfied in the work that we do, but mm -hmm. also setting up support so that we can build positions that nurses can move into leadership, but still feel like they have that balance of satisfaction with life and work. Right. Well, you know, I think we know that if you're satisfied, um, if you have that right balance and you're satisfied at home, you're going to bring that joy to the workplace. So, and I think that's a really important message from this, which is these are the characteristics that nurse directors and staff have identified are important. Um, they want nurse directors to, staff want nurse directors to be visible, but they don't need, and, and accessible, but you don't need to be here 12 hours a day, seven days a week to do really well in the role. And so I think that's very important and you do need to have balance. And I think it's also important for staff because if you're always there to do everything, then you're not empowering them and you're not role modeling. And so I think it's very important to create that balance. And I think when you spoke to it's, it's presence has many different forms. 
That's and right. it's, you know, both being actually physically present, but it's being responsive, available, accessible. And, you know, there are many things and ways that make that possible now. That's right. And perhaps some staff would rather you be quickly responsive to their text mm -hmm. than trying to set up a meeting with them. Yes, exactly. Just to summarize, Debbie, can you tell us what the overall conclusions of your study? So the characteristics that were identified by staff and nurse directors uh, support previous studies about the qualities of exemplary leaders. Uh, and these characteristics really describe transformational leadership styles of leaders, which is really um, a hallmark or a tenet of magnet hospitals. And what I think was most exciting, and you asked about this earlier, which is I'm so excited that there was such a strong correlation between the staff and nurse director identified characteristics. It's exciting because it's, um, I'm, I'm thrilled that there's such um, congruency between the groups, but also this has been very unique to the study. So previous studies that have looked at what a nurse directors and what a staff think about the transformational leadership qualities of the manager, there's often been a difference of opinion. So nurse directors score themselves much higher than staff, for example. And when there's been studies that have looked at the practice environment, nurse directors say the practice environment is better than staff perceive it to be. So this was really exciting that there was such agreement. And what next? So what do you see in terms of the implications and the findings and what you'll do with that in terms of future work? So right now, I think the study's been published. And so I think that the, I, I'm very happy that it's got wide dissemination. And, uh, and it's also been presented at some professional organizations. But I also think that at the hospital itself, we can use it because I think that it would serve as a best practice toolkit for our existing nurse directors. So perhaps what you were asking before about some of the nurse directors, maybe that aren't scoring so high. This could be a toolkit for them. Um, I think it will help guide us in developing leadership development programs. It will help me as I think about hiring new nurse directors, like what are the qualities that I should be looking for? And then further, what I'd like to explore is, I think we need to figure out a way for registered nurses to participate in the evaluation of their nurse directors. I'm not sure exactly what that should be, but that's sort of the next step that I have in mind about exploring that option. I think that's fantastic, and I think the impact of that could be really significant. And I, it's some of these things are things that I've thought about too and have definitely do not have the answers to, so yeah. I'll await more on that. But thank you so much. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.